happening everybody? Welcome to Tavian's World of Reptiles. My name is Tavian. This is my channel and if this is your first time stopping through, thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you like what you see, check out some of my other content, subscribe to my channel, ding that bell, and get notified on future content that I put out. Now recently I actually received a comment on one of my last videos kind of asking me about my opinions of the different methods of following our feeders and so today's video I decided I would cover some of the more commonly used methods of following our feeders and how I personally use them and my experience with the different methods and what I would suggest you all do um, as well as some of the pros and cons to those methods if there are any. But before we get into that today, I think it's super important to talk about things we don't want to do when it comes to following our rodents. Now, one of those things is we don't want to do anything that's going to end up with result resulting in our rodents getting cooked. Um, our animals don't eat cooked meat. It's not really good for that digest digestive system. So we want to avoid anything like putting them in microwaves or ovens and stuff to thaw or like straight up putting them in like hot boiling, boiling water uh, to thaw. Because let me, and let me tell you about that one. The boiling water one is it's not only likely that you could actually cook the rodent making your animals sick, but also boiling your rats can result in a bigger mess than you might be expecting. Uh, once you get a rat too hot too quickly, uh, nasty things start to happen. You know, you'll go end up going, go pick up that rat and the skin will just like literally come off. Uh, you go and feed that super flash hot rat to your snake and suddenly all the insides are on the outside and it is very disgusting. So we don't want to do anything like flash boiling our rodents. Like that is not going to end well for you or for your snakes. Now, one of the methods I have seen uh, used not very often, definitely was more from what I saw in my earlier years, and I did try this method way back when, but very rapidly decided that was not the way that I wanted to go, um, and that's using a blow dryer. Now, I mean, essentially that just means standing there with your blow dryer over your rodents, like waiting for them to thaw with the hot air and you know I tried this and I quickly got over it it was very it took way way longer than I wanted it to I think ultimately what I ended up doing is like I had them in a tub container thing and I just like hung the blow dryer in there and it was just kind of like in this heat circulating chamber thing and that still took a long time so not one I would definitely suggest but the blow dryer can come in handy with assisting with heating the rodents using uh, these other two methods that I'm about to discuss. Now, one of the more commonly used methods, actually probably the most commonly used method of thawing uh, rodents is to put them in hot water. Now, I said don't put them in hot boiling water. You know, they doesn't, no rat needs to go in boiling temperatures. What I mean is go to your sink and let it get as hot as it can get because no normal house sink actually gets up to boiling temps. And if you do have a sink that's getting that hot, well, then dial it back a little bit. But typically, house sinks don't get to boiling boiling temps so get it as hot as it can be and then you can thaw your rats in that now I use this along with the next method which is essentially just like sitting your rodents out into the room or wherever you're keeping them to thaw and allowing them to thaw at room temperature over the course of a couple of hours however long it takes for them to thaw now I use this in combination with the other one because it also depends on what your schedule is like and how your brain works. My brain is pretty scattered sometimes and sometimes like I know that I have to feed and I'll remember last minute and so sometimes I will put my smaller feeders in water because they actually thaw a lot faster as they're smaller um, and they thaw way quicker and so I'll put them in water and I will feed them off but the bigger rodents like my large and my extra large rats I will actually just kind of set them out to thaw at room temp I'll go off to work and then I'll come home and I will feed them that way now I personally actually enjoy the leaving them at room temp uh, mostly because when I come back um, they have been set out not only have they thawed but they've actually gotten to a nice warm tip to them because like my room stays warm so they're nice and they're flimsy and they really feel like I just like got a, a live rodent and just killed it on the spot and this is what I have and so that's what I really like about thawing in my just room temperature because I result in just a more realistic you know more recently killed 
feeling rodent, I guess you could say. And like, I get a lot better feeding responses from that. Not that I get really bad feeding responses, but they just seem to be able to like locate and spot them a lot faster uh, than just thawing them in water. Um, and of course, with the method of thawing them in water, you have to think about the fact that, you know, how depending on how big your rodents are, you might have to change out your water a little bit more frequently because of course, um, as your uh, rodents are starting to thaw, all that frozen coldness is going into the water. Um, and so the water gets cool really quickly. And so if you don't change it, then, you know, your rodents, your rodents will still thaw, but then by the time you actually get to them, um, they'll be thawed, but they'll be kind of cold based on the water. They'll be just like that water temperature and that may not be very warm. And this is where I say the blow dryer can come into effect uh, because if you have a room that you want to just leave them out to thaw in, but it's not a very warm room, yeah, they'll get thawed, but they won't be really warm. So now you've got either really wet, kind of cold rodents or you know not wet but also still kind of cold rodents and this is where you can take the blow dryer and you know blast them up for a few seconds or a few minutes or whatever just to get them a little bit of warmth give them something that the snakes can kind of key in on um and then you can present them to your road your snakes so uh those are some of the more commonly used things you know the blow dryer takes a long time not a fan of it but does help with the other two which are the leaving in really really hot water to thaw or just leaving at room temperature to thaw and of course however long it takes uh to thaw on those really depends on how much like you're putting your time into it as well because like i said with the water the water might need to be changed or you can just leave it as is and then of course with room temp just leaving it at room temp you have to decide how actually warm your room is and how long it's going to take for them to do that now there are people who will say that leaving your your rodents out um, and just at room temperature to thaw uh, suggests you know puts them more at risk uh, for getting uh, germs and other stuff like airborne whatever onto them. I think it's really no different than putting them in water. You know, water the germs and everything gets into the water, it soaks into the. I think. I think it's, you know, it's pretty equally matched when it comes to the risk of getting germs or whatever that people are concerned about um, onto your rodents. There's no 100% safe way, I guess, if that's the thing to be concerned about to thaw our rodents. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, they have to sit and thaw, whether that's sitting in water or sitting out in open space. It has to sit and thaw. So either way, you know, they become subjected to uh germs in the air and whatever else. I personally had no issues using any of these methods. I have left my rodents out. Uh, I've often done the whole like put them all out at night, wake up in the morning and feed after they've thawed all night. Like I've done that on several several occasions never had any issues um, as well as like leaving them out going to work for you know six to eight hours or whatever coming home they're all warm thawed out feeding then never had any issues the water one i don't actually honestly do as much unless i actually really just kind of have the time where i'm just doing it right before i leave work i don't do the water one as much i do just prefer to leave it out uh to room temp and to just let them thaw naturally so that they are just kind of dry but also warm because of like being in the room and just more like freshly dead feeling so Anyway, I hope this video was helpful to you who originally asked about this topic and anybody else who was interested in getting some ideas of how they would want to thaw their rodents. As I said, there are many, many different ways of things to be done in this hobby and feeding is no exception. Thawing our rodents is no exception. Everybody does things differently. It really does. Just depends on what your schedule is, what your um, preferred methods are, what your you know health concerns are. Are what it all depends on you it depends on you as a keeper and what works best for you um, just you do one thing this way and I do things this way it doesn't mean you're right doesn't mean I'm right doesn't mean you're wrong doesn't mean I'm wrong we're all just doing things that work best for us as long as we can get those feeders thawed safely and healthily without making an explosive mess or cooking our rodents then it's all good in the hood so you all take care love yourselves Love your reptiles, love your loved ones, and you guys keep spreading those herbs.